I'm delighted to introduce you all to Mark Breimer. Mark uh, is our office supply expert and uh, the happiness bringer to all of our offices on a very regular basis. So he owns Office Supply Solutions. And uh, Mark, we're happy to have you come talk to us about the uh, RUN showcase this, this month. <laughs> that is true. Hello, everybody. So, obviously, we go to work to make money, to make a living. But on the other hand, you also want to make sure it's enjoyable because none of us want to get up every morning and go, oh, man, I got to go to my own company and this is going to be miserable. <laughs> you laugh, but have you ever been there? Mm -hmm. so here we go. Happiness in business. That's my contact information. So we're going to go through the different letters and, and to me what they stand for. So happiness. Have a plan. Know what your business and personal goals are because here's the thing. If you don't know where you're going, how can you get there? How can you be successful? You just can get up every day and get on the hamster wheel and go, go, go. So do you have a goal to what you're doing? The A. Attitude. Attainable, I'm sorry. Um, you have to have the right attitude, but attainable is have attainable goals. What a lot of people do is they have these great goals, like I'm going to do 50 million in sales, and they've got 2 million in the books. It's like that can't work. You've got to find a way, as I'm sure you know, Tabitha, you've got to have step goals to make sure you get there in little increments and celebrate those little successes. Because if you don't celebrate the little successes and put this monster goal, you're going to be very upset that every day you don't attain the monster goal. Next, plan, plan, have a plan. This is because here's the thing. So many people don't always have a plan. They're going to say, okay, I'm going to do this, but they really don't know how they're going to get there. So that it causes extra stress that's not needed. And it makes you unhappy because the thing is, we all want to think like we won for the day. I know some of you know Don Barry. She used to be part of this group many years ago. And she always used to say, I want to win more days of the week than I lose. So you can't win every day all the time. You want to win, but... Things happen that are out of your control. Something blew up that you didn't know was going to happen. Someone hits you from left field with something. The market crashes. Things like that. You never know what's going to happen. So having those little wins and trying to win as many days as you can is important. Next is picking the right team. You can only do so much as a business owner. If you have an operation of one, okay, it's an operation of one. But if you're looking to grow, you have to add people to your team. And if you know the right people on the bus, and the right people in the right seats, I mean, less than those from his management styles. You have to have people around you that work together to succeed because if you don't succeed as a group, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So you want to make sure that everyone you have is on the right bus and ideally in the right seat or moving toward that right seat to make sure you're successful. Next, involve your team. <coughs> How many people know a business owner that thinks they have the only right answers? Anybody know those people? A lot of people do. That's why I always say, after someone's been with us for two weeks, I pull them aside and say, how's it going? I'm like, oh, it's fine. I said, what, what do you think we should change? My only rules are, number one, say it respectfully, and number two, actually believe what you're going to say. And I learned so much from my employees who are actually doing a lot of the work. It's rather than thinking, I'm the boss, I found the company, I know everything, and you do what I say or else you're, I'm going to throw you out of here. Versus saying, hey, you're actually doing the work. You're a fresh face to this. I might be too deep in my own business, what do you see that I'm not seeing? I mean, the best example of that is um, at our original location, we had, uh, we'd get a truckload of paper, which is 21 pallets of paper. Well, as we worked through that truckload, it went down the whole side of one of our warehouse walls, and we kept wheeling the paper all the way to the front. And one of my drivers comes in one day and goes, hey, Mark, is there a reason we don't just put an open pallet of paper by the door? And I'm like, <laughs> well, we ran this way for six years and we're obviously wrong. Would you like to change that now? He said yes. So thanks to him, we uh, made that change immediately. And because of Chris, we now have a new plan that works a lot better than the one I didn't think of. I didn't plan very well. Okay. N, never beat yourself up. We all make mistakes. The thing is this. My mom has never been in business. She actually was a teacher before having kids, and she, she loves to help and loves to try to figure out how to, w what I do, which she admittedly probably has very little accurate clue of what I do. But the whole point is this. 
I always told her, I said, listen, I'm going to make mistakes every single day. She always wants to know how my day was. I said, well, made mistakes today, but they were a lot smaller than the successes I had. So I take a half a step back and four steps forward, I'm gaining ground. If I have four big mistakes and one small success, eh, not quite the best day on the books. So again, it's looking at your mistakes and looking at them from a high level view versus playing the roller coaster of, oh man, I mispriced that. My day's over, I lost $800, or hopefully it's not that much, thank goodness, but lost this, or then saying, oh great, I had a great sale. I just picked up 15 chairs. So, but versus saying, you know, I'm excited about that order, but I'm also not gonna be devastated because I made a mistake. And looking at it from way up here versus doing this all day long because you're not gonna make it. You're gonna be exhausted. I mean, I don't know about all of you, but I could, I, I like what running or riding roller coasters once in a while, but riding them all day, every day, <laughs> might be a little tough. I mean, I'm not as young as I used to. I'm not like John who's in his mid-20s, right, John? <laughs> with a multiplier of four or five, okay. No, the whole point is, let's look at things for what they really are. I mean, we're all gonna have good and bad things happen in our day multiple times, but if you go too much into the weeds, you're gonna put yourself in the grave awful early or dislike what you're doing, just walk away. I love that second sentence you have up there. You do? <laughs> yes. Were you referring to me? Yeah, of course. Okay, I was just making sure. That that's what you that, were of course. I mean, all in favor. No, I was kidding. No, I was just to bring some lightheartedness to uh, a happiness presentation. Expect the best out of yourself. Because here's the thing. Otherwise, you're not going to be happy. I mean, yes, we all have good days and bad days. But if you can look in the mirror and be proud of yourself, I mean, I, I look at the people who you pick up the phone and their whole goal is to scam you or the emails you get and then you call them and their, their whole goal literally, and I've, I've learned this, there's actually classes in other countries that teach you how to scam people out of money. I'm like, how can you feel good about yourself when your whole goal to get out of bed today is to steal someone's else, someone else's success and fortune? For me, I have a different view. I want to make sure that I'm doing my best to be the best version of me so when I go and brush my teeth at night, I can look in the mirror and say, you know, I did my best today. Some days my best is good enough, some days it might not be. But the whole point is I did my best, whatever that is within my skill set. My skill set's different than any, everyone else's here. Just what it is. You have to be the best version of yourself. But so many people are trying to get out of things versus spend the same energy to move forward and get into things. S, separate work and home. We all have things that happen in our house and we have things that happen in our business. I mean. I have a growing business, thank goodness. I also have a two-year-old. I'm also not 27 years old. So the point is, if I bring a bad day at work home to my two-year-old, she doesn't understand. She doesn't get it. She just wants daddy, which I'm fortunate that she does. But on the other hand, though, if I take a, a situation that happens at home, take it to the office, take it on my employees, what did I really do? Nothing, other than destroy everything I have. It's like a house of cards. It's just going to implode. So you have to be able to segment and say, okay, I'm at work now. I gotta work, not saying you don't have a family when you're at work. Or I'm at home now, doesn't mean you don't have a business when you're home, but if you're present where you're at, you're gonna be more successful and happier because again, for me to think that I can do something to change my two-year-old when I'm in the office, I could, but that's not really as productive. Just like if I'm playing on the floor with my two-year-old and singing songs that she likes singing, is it really the right time to be thinking about the next business deal? It's not because I'm gonna be unhappy at both because I wish I was somewhere else. So being present where I'm at, to me, is the most important thing and making sure that where I'm at, like right now, I could be thinking of my two-year-old, other than mentioning in the presentation, or be thinking about my business, but I'm not. I'm here presenting to all of you, working on, I guess, presenting to other business leaders and learning and teaching at the same time. And the last one, the last slide is from a global renown person I learned this lesson from. Success should be celebrated. Bill Pernat, for those who don't know, is the person who founded this group and uh, helps me with my business. And he always says, as much as you do things, you get busy, you do, do a lot of things in a day, make sure when you do have successes, you celebrate them because if you don't, what's wor worth in having them? So again, not saying those are happiness goals for everybody, but those are some, just some of the things that I've used in my f 14 plus years of business that have helped kind of guide me to the best way I can be, my version of me, whatever that, is to you, hopefully something small stuck, and it can help you be more successful and make you more happy. That's what I got for you today. So there we go. Have anything they'd like to 
Ask about my version of happiness. <laughs> I don't know how it be. Yes, Les. Yeah. <coughs> um, all of the things that you said are really great ideas. Do you have some kind of mechanism to make sure that they're kind of built into the systematic routine? Because you know where I'm coming from. <laughs> no, not at all. The systematic routine, or is it just kind of a general mindset that you would from? You know, my mind works a lot different than yours, Les, believe it or not. <laughs> I, I am more of a... I'm more reactionary than I maybe Fun should genius. be. Yeah, that'd be a great word, yeah. great word. Um, so no, I, it's a general overall <coughs> thought process. I mean, I, I know what my goals are. I know what I need to do. Yeah. I might get there in a curvy line. Sometimes I might get on a longer path than another, but the end result usually is where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So I mean, again, I, I wish I could think like you, but unfortunately I wasn't made as a set up there like a perfect person. So I uh, work to the best version of myself and use my skill sets, but no, you're, you're right. It's, it's always having a plan is a great, yeah. a, a path to that plan. Yeah. Yes, Steve. Yeah, so that's, I love that you started with have a plan. Yes. Can you speak a minute to sure. what you do for your business? I mean, you've been successful over 14 years and in, in establishing your plan, do you, do you go away and put, put a plan together for the year or for the quarter or for the month? Talk, talk to us a little bit about it what you've learned to be effective in building a plan. So my plan, like in the office supply business, it's a numbers game, it really is, because you never know when one of your top accounts get bought out and the company says, well, you're gonna buy from Staples. I mean, it's happened many times. So my plan goes more to uh, networking and business generation, uh, having referrals for people in my network and then receiving referrals luckily in return, because I have to keep my pipeline beyond full because I never know what tomorrow or even today might bring as far as picking up or losing a client. Like I had a meeting the other day with someone who was a new business owner and found out their spouse, um, their boss was connected to 50 Applebee's. Is it gonna go anywhere? I don't know. It'd be great because we have another chain of fast food restaurants we work with. Or I have one uh, big law firm in town who the administrator might be leaving for another state and she says I'm gonna keep the business but is, am, I, am I really gonna do it? I don't know. I hope I am but they're my number four account right now. That's supposed to happen before the end of the year. I have to be ready for her, them to leave, which I hope they don't. But I have no control over that other than doing my best to get to know the people around her and being supportive of her, which I even helped her find a realtor for her new house in her new location. So that's the best plan I got. Any other questions I can assist with or are we ready for the next presentation? Yes, Richard. What is your best seller? Just out of curiosity. My best seller? Unfortunately, it's paper. Yeah, right. <laughs> no one orders the light stuff. Our preferred <laughs> product is printer cartridges. But yes, okay. we, we, sell, we sell a lot more paper than anything else. I mean, that's why I have to bring it in by the truckload, which for those who don't know is 840 cartons of paper. Mm -hmm. so, that, so we uh, sell paper multiple times a day, thank goodness. So otherwise we'd be out of business. So, so are your printer cartridges cheaper than getting them on Amazon or through HP? Or? Good question. Um, they are not cheaper in price. But the way I describe it is, if you go online, you're getting, you're, if I say we're going out for steak, you're getting White Castle. Mm -hmm. With me, you're getting steak and shake price with Ruth Chris quality. Ooh. Because, because <laughs> all of our cartridges have a warranty. If you go online, a customer very quickly bought a printer from us, saw my cartridges were too expensive, bought them online, cartridge blew up, ruined their $400 brand new printer, and there's nothing I could do. Mm -hmm. If my cartridge had blown up, we would have gotten the printer fixed, repaired, replaced, free. That's a warranty you have with our cartridges. So there you go. Not to make that a sales pitch. So have a good day, everybody. Thank you.